Welcome back to the workshop here for Howard Piano Industries. I'm Steve Howard and we're going to be um, showing you today how to replace a hammer shank on an upright piano. Uh, sometimes you'll come across a piano and the hammer is broken off or it, um, you know, so, or for some reason you replace the hammers. So we're going to show you the process and some of the tools and so forth that we're going to we use for replacing um, the hammer shank <coughs> on an upright piano. So here we've got, um, this is an old upright uh, action that uh, I've um, I use for demonstration videos um, that I got from an old, old piano that was being junked. Um, so we're going to be using that. So what we're going to do is the first thing you want to do, of course, you have to take the hammer butt out. Um, so we'll just uh, pick one of these uh, that I don't have this in a action cradle, which would make, probably make it a little bit better, but I uh, just didn't didn't put it in the action cradle. And now to take the hammer butt out, there's, um, if you follow, here's the hammer butt right here. Okay, of course we've got the hammer and the shank, and it goes down and it goes into the butt. <clears throat> and then right below below that, is it's attached to a flange. Um, and then that flange is attached to the, the rail with a with a flange screw. So I'm just going to unscrew that. And you might have noticed that I uh, disconnected the bridle strap first. Okay, so here we have the bridle strap and I just unhooked that from the bridle wire. Um, and then I'm going to go through. And here I've got a flange screwdriver with a combination tool handle. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to get that screwdriver and pull the, the jack forward because the, the screw is going to be right behind the, the jack. And uh, so kind of pulling that jack forward will get it out of the way so that you can um, turn that screw. So I'm going to unscrew that. And then once we got that unscrewed, and then what I, what I do there is just lift, lift these hammers out of the way to, to lift the, oh, there we go, to lift the, um, the hammer assembly out of the out of the action. Okay, so I'm going to take the screw out so that it doesn't get lost. Set that aside. So here we've got a, a um, hammer assembly. Okay, so we've got the flange, the hammer butt, uh, here's the shank, and then the hammer head. Okay, so you know the shank might be broken. You know that's the reason you're replacing the shank. Um, you know if you're not going to repair the shank, you know it's it's good to replace them. Uh, so what we're going to be doing here is taking, um, this is our um, upright hammer head and butt extractor. Okay, we're going to be taking, taking the shank out of both the hammer and the butt so that we can put a new shank in. Um, and this tool is helpful in, um, in removing the, the head and the, and the butt from the shank. Now... Uh, some glues are harder to remove than others, um, and I did a couple test ones on on this on hammers on this action, and found that the glue, especially in the butt, is really really um, really stubborn. So, so what I you know what you can do is um, that's helpful is removing the glue collar from the from around the shank at the hammer head, and the glue collar is what happens is when they glue it. Um, you know, they put enough glue in so that it oozes out just a little bit, so it kind of makes a ring around the around the um, base of the shank there. Okay, and we'll do that. And the other thing you can do is, uh, and what I found I needed to do on this piano, and like I say, sometimes it comes off easier than others, and um, this one was especially tough. Not necessarily on the, on the hammerhead as much as on the on the butt, as you can. Usually those glues are, were water soluble, like uh, if it was hide glue or whatever. So what I'll do is just put a few drops of water um, in to loosen that and let that set, so that the uh, the glue can uh, soften up a little bit. So it um, makes it easier to get the hammerhead out. Otherwise, it might break the shank, and then you got to end up drilling the drilling the shank out, which is an option, okay, if you, if you, if you, um, if you break the shank off right at the base, 
um, you know you can you can drill it but you just want to make sure that you're drilling it at the correct angle um, in the hammer butt they usually go in at a 90 degree angle um, but as you can see the hammer head um, is is not at a 90 degree angle so so you want to make sure that if you have to drill that hammer head out if you're re if you're reusing the same hammer head which we're going to be using in this showing in this demonstration that you um, drill it out at the correct angle okay so there I've um, um, you know took taken off the glue collar I'm just going to take some some water here got my hypo oiler and just put a few drops at the base there at the hammer butt loosen up that glue and then also at the hammer head and it helps loosen it up a little bit so um, so usually what happens is uh, the hammer head comes off fairly easily and what, the way this um, particular uh, tool works is it is it um, uses pressure to push off. So um, what you do is you kind of put it here on the on the shank, and then and we have shorter ones of of this tool available as well for for spinet pianos. Um, you know, because this particular tool is is too long for the spinet or console size piano. So if you've got a spinet or console piano, you're going to want to get the shorter version of it. Um, if you're going to do this, be doing this regularly, it's a good idea to get one for get both the longer one and the shorter one. So here we go. We're going to see how easy this is. Oh, this one might come off fairly simple. Yeah. Yeah. So there, the hammerhead came off. Okay, and like I said, the hammerhead will come off before the hammer butt, um, just like it did. So there we've got uh, the hammerhead with the hole. Um, you know, we don't have to redrill the hole or anything. Just um, so that came off fairly simply. Now to um, to remove the butt, once you've got the head off, you're going to want to use um, this shank clamp, which is sold separately from the tool. Okay, so um, that's this piece here. We sell that that separately, and what what we'll do is we're going to put that here on the end of the shank. And I'm going to position it here so that it's parallel with the with the butt, mostly, anyways. Okay, so we'll tighten that on to the clamp so that the so that the tool has something to push up, push up against when it's pushing the the butt off. Okay. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set that there. And the same thing here, except uh, I flipped it around so that the, the part that's being pushed out is being pushed up against the hammer butt rather than on the, on the head end. Got a little ways to go here. Okay, just make sure that's on there nice and solid. And then we'll twist it, and hopefully get the butt to move off. Oh, it's not uh, what it's actually doing is pushing the clamp up. So I'm going to try this again. I'm going to have to put a little more water on the on the glue and tighten up that that clamp. And like I said, sometimes it doesn't work as easily as it uh, as at other times. Sometimes it comes right off, just depending on what kind of glue it is and 
and so forth. This glue, this piano, I think, was from the very early 1900s, so it's been around a long time, and it is most likely the the original hammers and the original glue. So um, you'd think that the glue would be brittle after that amount of time, but um, but it's holding pretty good. So I'm just going to move this clamp down a little bit. Make sure that's on there nice and tight. And we'll try it again. And they're going to gotta make sure it's turned down enough that we can fit it in there. There we go. Okay, so try number two. Well, I heard a snap, and it looks like it broke the glue. Okay, so, so I've had a couple of instances where it, where I heard the snap, and it actually broke the, broke the shank off. And then you got to drill out the hammer butt, which, not too big of a deal, but it's easier if it just comes right off. So, but this time it, we were fortunate, and it broke the glue joint. So there we go. We've got the hammer butt, and. Uh, so what uh, what we'll do probably is uh, clean that hole out a little bit. I use um, this is my um, this is the the drill bit from from my hammer head and butt boring jig because uh, it's the right diameter for cleaning out those holes. So I'll use that, and then what I'll usually do is scrape the excess glue off around the t top of the hole. So we don't have any of that in the way. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing on the hammer head is make sure that's cleaned out real well. Okay, so make sure there's no excess glue there. All right, now, um, the other thing you're gonna need, of course, is a new hammer shank, which we sell these in our store. Um, and um, here we've got um, hammer shank cutters, okay, or upright hammer shank uh, nippers or cutters or whatever you call them. And uh, it does have, make sure, um, it does have a replaceable blade, so if the blade gets dull, you can replace that. Um, but uh, here we've got the, um, and the other tool we're going to need is, this is the hammer shank reducer. You're going to want to make sure that the the hammer shank is a good, good, fit inside the both the hole for the for the hammer butt and the hole for the hammer head. You want to have some room for the glue. If it's too tight um, you're not going to get a good good glue glue joint. Um, so you want to have a little bit of room in there for that. Um, oh here we go. We want to move our so this uh, this hammer shank reducer is used in the combination tool handle. So what we're going to do is I'm going to check the the uh, I'm going to put it in the hammer butt first so that we can install that back into the piano and that's really tight. So I'm going to go and uh, loosen this up. This this uh, nut on here tightens uh, you know that that measure that gauges how much um, how much uh, material you're going to take it off. Okay, and that's. So you turn it a little bit to get it to the point where you're reducing the hammer shank some. Okay, I'm going to go a little further probably just because I didn't take off a whole lot. Go a little bit more here. 
I just make a little bit of a turn to um, tighten it up a little bit to um, take off a little because if you try to take off too much at once it's it's too tight and you can't turn it it's um, doesn't work very good so I just do a little bit at a time I'm going to check that here in the hammer butt yeah that's that's pretty good you want it you want it to you want it you don't want it to be too loose so that it's all wobbly but you want to have enough room that's probably still a little bit on the tight side so I'm going to go just a little bit further with removing some of that shank material there we go so it uh, just reduces the there we go that's that's pretty good that's it's not not really wobbly not too wobbly anyways and uh, there's room for the glue so um, what I'm going to do is and you can if for as far as what glue you're going to use um, you know if you've I mean obviously the the best glue to use is hot hide glue but you know, especially if you're doing this out in the field if you're in somebody's house and um, you know, you're working on a piano and doing this repair, you're not going to have hot hide glue available to use. So you can use wood glue, um, you know, like a tight bond wood glue. Um, but uh, usually what I do is to avoid having to um, carry all kinds of different glues with me, I've usually got um, some of the CA glue. I use the thick, thick version for this particular repair because... Um, it uh, gives me a little bit more set time, and it, it's not going to run on me when I go to put it in the hammer. So you, you might say, well, you CA glue you can't remove, but you can if you have the CA glue remover. So make sure you've got some of that in case you have to take it back apart. Um, to re and, um, So what I'm going to do is when, when you put it in the hole, you don't want to just, you don't want to like overflow it, but put enough in there that you're going to get some of it oozing out a little bit so you have that glue collar. So... I'm going to put the glue in. This is pretty thick. I don't want quite big enough of a hole for my... Um, at the tip. But anyway, so put the... And if you get too much glue, you want to avoid that because then it'll run down and make quite a mess. So just have something handy there to wipe your wipe your excess glue with. Make sure you don't, try, or at least try not to get this on your fingers because it's sticky stuff. Okay, but there we go. There we've got. I'm going to get another paper towel here. There we've got our um, hammer shank. And this dries, sets fairly quickly, So, but don't touch it because it's, like I say, if you get it on your fingers, it doesn't come off very, very easily. And make sure you've got some um, CA glue remover or debonder is what it's called, I think, um, just in case that you get it somewhere where you don't want it. All right, good. Now we're going to put the put this back and what we're going to do is we're going to install the hammer oh uh, we're going to install the hammer on the um on the shank after we have it in the in the um in the piano so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and um whoops drop my screw but what we're going to do and take and and uh, reduce the the um the hammer though what we're going to probably do first is um, you want to get uh, a general idea of how long it's going to be because you're probably going to have to cut some of this off but um, we're going to check that's that's a pretty good fit but we might have to cut most of that off so I'm going to put this back in the piano the hammer assembly Dry. Make sure that's dry so I don't get glue all over. 
Okay, and when you go to put the when you go to put the hammer assembly back in, what I do is uh, probably can't see this, but I I go and push down on the jack so that I can get the flange and the screw in place, and then I'm probably in the way here, but. Um, Yep, and that happens too, that the screw falls out, and and if that happens, it's good to have my magnetic pickup tool. You can usually see where it's at. There we go. That's why it's nice to have the magnetic pickup tool for, for those occasions. All right. Try this again. Try not to get in the way of the video there. Put that down there. I think it wasn't quite low enough with the screw. There we go. So, first time you don't succeed, try and try again. That's what they say anyways. So, got that tightened on and then I will put the bridle strap back on. Now make sure when you, when you go to put the bridle strap on that you've pushed that jack down, otherwise the jack's gonna get jammed underneath the hammer butt and That won't be so good. So, all right, so we can see that the, um, and what I'll do is I'll get that hammer butt spring in place while I'm there. We can see that this hammer shank is going to be too long. Okay, it's already sticking up above where the um, other hammer shank. So, if we check that, okay, we're going to have to cut off. Mm, off a little bit. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll start uh, by cutting off not too much. If I go too far, then it's too short. Okay, so I cut off a little bit. That's probably still going to be too long, yep. So, cut off a little more. It's easier to cut off smaller amounts anyways at a time. Yeah, we're getting close. And we might have to do some spacing once we're done too because sometimes you don't get your shank in there completely straight. But it is good to, yeah that's pretty close but we're not not quite close enough so we're going to shave off just a little bit more. There we go. There we go, that's perfect. Okay, so you know, shave off what you need there to get the shank to the right length so that the um, the hammer can line up with the with the hammers next to it. Okay. Um, so then what we'll do once we get that in place is um, put our glue in. And again, 
again here. We don't want to overdo this because it can make a real mess if you've got a lot of glue running down your hammer shank, especially with the CA glue. So, and you want to make sure you use the thick stuff. And probably what I'll do is just that, let that set for a, for a couple seconds anyways. Your glue, put your hammer on there, make sure it's lined up with the other hammers, both side to side and front to back and angled, and um, make sure everything is moving at about the same, same level, okay? So, because yeah, it's easier to make adjustments now before the glue dries than to than to try to have to uh, make adjustments later. It can be done, but um, at this point it's, it's easier to make the adjustments than later on. So, so there we've got um, the, our hammer in place, and um, it's all glued in. So um, that's how you uh, replace a hammer shank in a piano. Um, you know, and so this can be done if you're, if you're replacing the shanks, if you've got a broken broken hammer shank. Um, you know, we're going to show in another video how to replace uh, the hammers to put new hammers on, you know, both with new shanks or using the old shanks. Um, but uh, it'll be coming in a future video. But um, feel free to let us know. We will have links on our website for all the tools and, and parts that we used in this video. So feel free to visit our website. It's howardpianoindustries.com.